must do more physics. I think we're doing 44 to 54. Um, hey, I'm going to uh, do something for you in case you're like, you know what, I got this stuff. I don't want to watch your whole stupid video here, McGrath, just so I can see if my answers are right. So um, I should probably do this regularly with the evens. So there's your 44 to 54. You can pause on that and check your answers. If you get them all right, I don't think you need to watch this video. Um, it's optional. This is a resource. That's what I do. I'm a curator of resources. Um, all right. When started, an armadillo will leap upward. Suppose it rises 0.45, sorry, 0.544 meters in the first 0.2 seconds. Um, all right. So let's see. Armadillos, like other things, bats, pangolins, um, all subject to the influence of gravity. All right, so uh, what was its initial velocity? Well, I guess we got to do a little math. So that looks like a delta y equals 1 half at squared plus vit. And it uh, looks like the delta y is 0.544 in the up direction, minus 4.9 t squared plus vit. All right, good thing I took algebra. Uh, 0.544, going to add to that. 4.9 times 0.2 squared, going to divide that, 0.2. So it looks like the initial velocity was 3.7 meters per second. And uh, you already looked at it in your three point. Yep, that's it. That's the right answer for that part. B. What is its speed at the height of uh, when it's at that same height? So that's the same. What's the VF here? Well, let's see. I think the easiest way is probably that. So let's see. 3.7 minus 9.8 2.2. So it has slowed down to that. And part C, uh, make the graphs. Oops, nope, that's the wrong problem, sorry. Um, how much higher does it go? How much higher does it go? OK, so let's see. There's a couple ways to do that. We could either make this the initial velocity and then find the delta y and add it to the this, or um, oh no, I guess that would be the answer. If I did it with this as the initial velocity, how much higher does it go? Or I could go like from the start velocity of this and all the way to the peak and then subtract that. There's different ways you could set it up. Um, I think I'll just take this, how much higher does it go? So let's just assume then that this is its initial velocity. It's just starting from there. And if we're interested in all the way up to the peak, that's where the final velocity is zero. So that's going to be a VF squared equals VI squared plus 2A delta Y. So So it looks like I got 1.74 divided by, oops, squared, divided by 19.6. Looks like our armadillo 
we'll go up another 15 centimeters or so. All right, good. They kept one more digit on that. Why not? All right, 46. Raindrops fall 1,700 meters from a cloud to the ground. If they were not slowed by air resistance, how fast would the drops be moving when they struck the ground? And then B, would it be safe to walk? I'm just going to go ahead and answer part B right now. No, not safe. Um, all right, so if something actually falls 1,700 meters, uh, unchecked by air resistance, experiencing acceleration due to gravity, our gravitational field, local, um, then uh, how fast, and we're, their rain drops, which means their initial velocity is zero because they're being dropped from the cloud. So how fast are they going to be going? Pretty fast. So let's see, VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2. And all right, so it looks like I want the square root of nineteen point six times seventeen hundred. That would be about a hundred and eighty three meters per second, which is, uh, if you wanted to do a quick conversion, uh, you'd multiply that by 3600 and divide it by 1609 to get to miles per hour. That's about 400 miles an hour. Um, that's pretty fast. I mean, it's water, but still, water going 400 miles an hour is uh, not safe. All right. You learn something there. 48. A hoodlum, hmm. A hoodlum throws a stone vertically downward with an initial speed of 12 meters per second from the roof of a building. 30 meters above the ground. So, uh, that's a very hoodlum like thing to do. Uh, now, that's the speed, 12 meters per second. If it's going down, I guess if I'm going to stick with my convention of always making a positive, that initial velocity will be negative. 30 meters above the ground, how long does it take the stone to reach the ground, and what's the speed at impact? All right, this is pretty standard fare. Acceleration is negative g. Initial velocity is 12 meters per second. It's in the down direction, so I need to make that negative. The displacement is also down, so I need to make that negative. And now we would like to find first for part A the how long and then how fast. So let's do that first. That's going to be a delta y equals one half a t squared plus v i t, and that delta y is negative thirty equals negative four point nine t squared minus v i. T. That looks like a trusty old calculator problem. And look, I've already got the starts of it there. So uh, minus, and then uh, plus 30. Uh, I don't know how that's open that window. Yeah, I mean, that last thing was, I don't know if you remember the last problem we graphed on here, if you were hanging around then. But um, I think this one since it was thrown from a building that was only 30 meters up. That's a little bit better. Um, and when does it hit the ground? Well, I'm going to go ahead and second calculate and find that zero. Um, it's somewhere between zero and two seconds, because that's my window, so I'm not going to play the cursor game. That's at 1.54 seconds. And how fast is it going? I could set up another equation, but I'm all set to go here 
with my second calculate, uh, what is the slope, number 6, at that point. And look, since my cursor was there last, it already knows where I want to be. How about that? So my final, um, they wanted speed now, so I'm going to get rid of that negative sign. The final speed when it hits the ground is 27 meters per second. All right. How do we do? I'm just going to make sure. Double check the answers here. We are good. All right. Um, number 50. At time t equals zero, apple one is dropped from a bridge onto a roadway beneath the bridge. Somewhat later, apple two is thrown down from the same height. And figure 230 uh, gives us some information about that. And time ts is two seconds. for the first apple to hit. That one's dropped, so the slope right here at the start would be zero. Um, and then Oh, I guess, um, so the scaling of this, we just need to kind of get at what the scaling is. It looks like each one of the little tick marks in their graph is going to be a quarter of a second. And it looks like this apple um, is thrown Sorry, that's a bad, you have the graph in your book. It's a bad reconstruction of it. So one second, and then here, this is at 2.25 seconds. Um, so I guess the thing we need to know about the first apple, we need to figure out what this height is here, figure out what that is. So from apple one, uh, I know Apple 1, that the acceleration is negative g. I'd like to know the delta y so that I can borrow that for apple 2, because they're going to have the same delta y. Uh, and that one was dropped, and it took 2 seconds to get to the ground. So uh, I'd like to find that initial velocity. So delta y is equal to 1 half at squared plus vit. Uh, I have lots of practice identifying if it takes you a little longer to figure out which equation you need. Of course, that's uh, great, totally fine, expected. Uh, and the VI is zero, so it looks like my delta Y is, what's that, 19.6, I believe? 4.9 times, yep. Uh, so it's coming out negative here. Why? Because uh, it's going down. So, so will Apple II be going down? And, of course, the acceleration is the same. I don't know the initial velocity of this Apple. That's what we're looking for. But I do know that from the scaling of the graph that it uh, takes 1.25 seconds to get to the ground. So, uh, same game. Delta Y equals 1 half AT squared plus VIT. But now I know the delta y, negative 4.9, 1.25 squared, plus unknown initial velocity of apple 2 times 1.25. So that's a negative sign there. I've got negative 19.6 plus... 4.9, I'm adding this over to here, doing algebra. I had a professor in math graduate school who uh, would, when you came across something, it was, this was like um, non-Euclidean, it was like crazy geometry stuff, so like these really big 
elaborate proofs of things that took up like more than the entire chalkboard. Like you'd have to erase things. And but it, anyway, he'd get to certain points in whatever he was doing, and he'd like kind of take a step back from the board, and be looking at some pretty like crazy algebra that had to happen, and he'd just turn to us, and he'd say. And this is algebra that's really best done by you at home. And then he'd just kind of like jump to the next part uh, and skip over all that stuff. And the truth was, I, I really like this guy. I got to be friends with him a little bit outside of class. The truth was he was just really bad at algebra. And he didn't want to do it um, because he knew it was not going to go well. So, um, of course, he'd probably be able to handle this just fine. That was really, really messy stuff. But uh, that was a fun class, like that guy. So they asked for um, the speed that it was thrown at. This is the velocity, so the speed is the absolute value of that. I wonder where that guy is now. Um, a bolt is dropped from a bridge under construction. These people on these bridges need to be more careful. Uh, falling 90 meters to the valley below the bridge. In how much time does it pass through the last 20% of its fall? What's its speed when it begins the last 20% and when it reaches the valley beneath the bridge? Okay, so I got a 90 meter fall altogether, but we're interested in the last 20% of its fall. And I guess they mean the last 20% of the distance. You could debate that, um, or you could make the point that they should have been a little bit clearer here about whether they meant the last 20% of the distance or the time. So I think they mean the distance. So 20% of 90 is 18. Um, so let's see what we can do. I think the first thing, I think this might actually be the answer to part B, but I'm going to do it first. What's the speed when it reaches the last uh, 20%? I think I'm going to do that. So uh, what's the velocity here? So doing that, this is part B. I've got an initial velocity of 0. Acceleration, of course, is negative g. I'm going to fall. Uh, what is that? 72 meters falling, so that's negative. And uh, I'd like to know what's the speed when I get there. So Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2a delta y. So my velocity when I get to that spot is going to be uh, push some buttons on my calculator. Uh, 37.6. And if you're wondering, like, I, did, I took a square root to get that, and then I made the answer negative, and you're like, whoa, how'd you get a negative there? Well, it's going down. And you know from algebra class, speaking of algebra, that when you take the square root of something, uh, you, this, the answer is really like plus or minus. But this is a physics problem. Like, this thing can't be going plus or minus 37.6 meters per second. It's one or the other. I mean, it's, it's or, right? And how do we know which one? Uh, we think for like one second, or like, oh, it's going down. So um, that's the answer for B, 52B. And for 52A, they want to know um, how much time does it pass through the last 20%. Um, I guess, well, now that we know this, I guess I could do, yeah, I think I could do that. You could also do the time it takes for the whole thing and then the time that it takes to fall from here to here and subtract them. That would be another way of doing it. But now that I have this, I think I like doing this B first because I think uh, now I can just say with the same acceleration, of course, then if I had an in initial velocity, if I just consider this to be like the start of it now, and it's going to fall in the last 18, then what's the time associated with that? Um, it's often the case in uh, 
this little physics game that we're playing, that there's more than one way to do something, to set it up. And um, those multiple ways should all lead to the same answer. All right, so it looks like a little graphy graphy. So that's set up right. My initial velocity now is 37.6. And I'm going to plus 18 over to there. I bet that this is, yeah, not a terrible window for that. Um, and my time is going to be that 0. And it's somewhere between 0 and 2. It looks like um, 0.45 seconds for that. And then um, part C, how fast is it going when it gets to the ground? Uh, there's different ways that you can do that. Um, any number of them. Uh, one would be to start with initial vol velocity of zero, let it fall 90 meters. Um, Let's do that that way. Sure, why not? Uh, initial velocity of zero. It's going to fall 90 meters, the whole thing. And interested in the final velocity now with our local gravitational acceleration. Um, so that's zero. So two, a delta y. And that's going to give us of course, that'll be downward, so the so how fast is it going? That would be that fast. Maybe that's supposed to be. Was that a how fast too? That probably should just be a positive version of that. All right, I think we have one more problem to do. I'm going to eat lunch. Uh, 54. A stone is dropped into a river from a bridge that is 43.9 meters above the water. Did they say dropped? They did. Okay. Uh, another stone is thrown vertically down. That's S1 for stone one. Stone two. Hey, both of them are going to have the same acceleration due to the dent in fabric of space-time that the Earth makes around here. Um, let's see. Another stone is thrown vertically down one second after the first is dropped. The stones strike the water at the same time. Um, so that's going to have the same, right, same bridge. Uh, I don't know the initial velocity of this one. I think that's what I want, right? How fast was it thrown down? Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, so I think I just need to find the time here. And then this one was thrown one second later, so I need to just subtract one from the time and put that over here. Right? It's going to take a shorter time for this one, and I can find that. All right, so uh, this looks like our old buddy 1 half at squared. So uh, negative 43.9 equals negative 4.9 t squared. That's gone, so clear square root about three seconds. So this one has got a one second head start. This one's only going to be doing that for two seconds. So uh, I need to find that VI. So uh, same negative 43.9 equals negative 4.9 t squared 
plus unknown vi times 2 seconds. Time to do the algebra again. Best left for you to do at home. Oops. Let me know what this is. It's 2. So let's see. So I got what that initial velocity is going to be, about negative 32 meters per second hurled at the ground. And that is not the right answer. So let us look at that again. Um, oh, no, I totally messed that up. Hold on, I see what I did wrong. It was algebra. Um, I bet you didn't mess it up, did you? You know what you're doing. Just made a sign mistake. Yeah. about 12 meters per second in the downward direction. And um, I think they said how fast, so we would report for the speed, how fast was it thrown, would give the positive version of that. And then they want um, a couple velocity time graphs. So the first stone's dropped and hits the ground in about three seconds. And that would look like this. Of course, the slope is just negative 9.8, right? And the second stone is dropped a second later. Um, uh, sorry, not dropped, but it's thrown downward. Um, so that means that at time one, it already has some downward velocity. And that downward velocity, we figured that out, didn't we? It's a negative 12 meters per second. So after one second, this is going to be at negative 9.8, right? Because that's the slope of that. So it's a little bit below that. And then that will go like that. So that's what that looks like. Cool.